Hey, I'm on holiday, sitting in this lovely garden, but AI never sleeps, and neither do I when it comes to trying out new AI tools. So when I spotted my brother's 3D printer, I thought, why not whip up a custom toy of my dog Chewy using a little AI magic? A few minutes later, I had a design, add a few more, and AI gave me a full 3D model. After three hours of printing, boom, I had this in my hand, plus a key holder with his little face in it. Let me show you how easy this whole process can be, and stick around, because at the end, I'll share where this tech will take Take you next. So you can use any AI image generator to kickstart your design process. Just choose the one that you prefer the most. For example, you can work in ChatGPT, Midjourney, Recraft, or even Google AI Studio. So if you go into aistudio.google.com, if you select the Gemini 2.0 Flash Preview Image Generation model, because they give you more, just make sure you choose that one. You can prompt it to generate an image for you. In ChatGPT, the same thing. I from today, give me an image of a black and white mini schnauzer made out of Lego blocks on a plain white background. I want to design it for a 3D print, so it needs to be realistic, so it really look like it's made from Lego. And it gave me this quite cool image of Chewy, which as you can see from my toy, it was quite accurate in its generation. Very quickly, within a minute, I've got a design going. And once you've got your design going, you can start keep iterating on your prompt. Like in Midjourney, I was playing around with referencing. So just like in ChatGPT, you can upload an image or images for reference you can sketch a design in pencil if you want and give it to chat gpt as a reference and and use that with your prompt to create a new design in mid journey you've got this omni reference capability now so you just click up here to upload images i just dragged my portrait of an image of me onto omni reference you can do it just one at a time with the prompt i wrote their character turnaround sheet full body view of a middle-aged man with short textured gray hair, asked it to give me a front view, side view, and back view in one image. It was in some cases accurate, in some cases, like you can see here, it completely didn't get my likeness. So you keep iterating until you get an image that you actually like. And the same thing can be done in ChatGPT or Gemini or any other AI image generator. So I use also Recraft, gave it a similar prompt, very short. They didn't come out quite Lego-like, uh, more Play-Doh-like, I would say, but quite cute. I mean, that'd be fun to print as well. Or in this case, I said, I want a tessellated polygonal design of a mini schnauzer. I could use that as a potential reference and, and start of a design and push it further by iterating on the prompt or using this image as a reference. Within minutes, you can have a design going. And then in ChatGPT, what I like about it is you can say, take this image and give me a side view of it. And it was quite accurate, true to the original image. And then I asked it for a front view. And this is what I mean by iteration. You see, it's given me a front view but the dog's now sitting so i asked it no make it same pose as previous and it gave me it sitting again so i said no here's the original design give it to me in front view and it gave it to me in front view and this is really important i'll show you why i need it in different views to get a better 3d model it's not critical i advise having a front view back view and two side views of the design within chat gpt you can literally just write there ignore that last one because it made a mistake notice the earlier ones are standing so i want the front view i even made a spelling mistake but it understood me of this one that I just uploaded and it gave me it in front view. Quick way of generating a design in different views took me about, I don't know, a minute to generate. Once I saw that it was sitting, I kept going. I said, okay, you know what? Even the sitting one, give me an inside view, the back view of it. Then I kept going. I said, add a ring to the top. So I thought of turning the actual 3D model into a key holder, which is very possible. I could print that. So you can see, you can design very quickly with AI imagery. Let me show you how you can then turn that into a 3D model using AI. I tried three different platforms. There are multiple platforms out, out there. One of the best, if not the best currently, is the one made by Hyun Yuan, 3D.hyunyuan.com. Dot tencent.com. I'll link the sites to in the description of this video. When you log in, it's all in Chinese. And if you're in Windows, click on your right mouse button, hit translate to English, and you'll get that web page translated. It's free to use for a limited amount. For me, I was able to do multiple generations in a day. Once you're in here, you've got what's written here, Tusheng 3D, and you get the options to either load a single image 
or multiple images. So if with a single image, you could load up that 3D view of your model. So this one here, I could load it up. I can download this. So click on the top right here and download the image. In mid journey, you can just a right mouse button and save image. Just download your images to your folder and then upload it by clicking here and uploading any of your images that you've downloaded. But with multiple images, you can load up your front view, your rear view, left view, right view. This takes a few minutes. Once you've got all your images uploaded, simply click the generate now button and it'll generate a, a 3d model so as you can see here they've got examples where they've got a front view of this character side view back view it gives it a 3d model colored so it'll have the color textures in there so if i look at the chewy sitting model you can look at it in 3d once it's generated you can just look around and rotate it with your left mouse button you can look at it just gray shaded so without the color just to see how the shape of it the form of it if you like it so the other platform is triple3d.ai. Again, register, you get a few, quite a few credits for free to use to generate. You basically load up a single image. You can load up multiple images, so different views, but here you'll have to upgrade and I assume to actually pay for those credits. Just load up a single image of your toy, of your product, click generate, and it'll use up 50 credits. Now, if we look at the model that it generated of that Chewy standing up. This is where I generated it. I can look at it in gray shaded mode, in texture mode, and I can say, am I happy with this? Should I generate another one? Another platform that I didn't use, but is as good from my understanding is called Meshi.ai. People are creating computer game assets uh, using just image to 3D very quickly also creating little figurines and toys and if you want to build more complex and you know how to use 3d software like maya and blender uh, it's a good way to start creating models let's go back to the hyun yuan model and you can see that i've loaded up a reference image of a key holder just the front view and the back view and it was able to figure out how that is in 3d and this took a two to three minutes to figure out how to generate it and build the 3d model for you the reason I, I recommend you having a front view, side views, and back views, if you look at this particular model, which I've only uploaded a single reference image, so just kind of the front view or kind of a 3D view. It was done in mid-journey to create an image from a reference of my friend's dog. And from a single image, it didn't quite give me, if I look at it in gray shaded mode, a lot of detail. I mean, it was a very basic model, I think. Um, very printable. I think there's an issue there with the ear. Now, if I look at the model I created out of four references from that image that I created in mid journey, I uploaded it into chat GPT and said, give me a front a side views and back view of this particular model. I got a better quality 3d model. You can see it's got the, the mouth uh, shape. It's got the nose, which is a bit more defined hair. The eyes are a bit more defined as well. The pose, probably these hairs that stick out might be an issue for the print maybe i don't, I don't have enough uh, experience myself yet but i could take that into a 3d modeling software and get rid of those and simplify those details so they'd be easier for the print as you can see from four reference images we got a better 3d model so i i do recommend going from front side views back view uploading them into these platforms and generating the model that you want in that way and the way you would output that is if you're in Hyun Yuan, you can click here download format at the bottom right i would select the stl format that's a format that's polygonal 3d shape that's used in a computer animation but also the 3d printers know how to read that in and the same goes in the tripo website you can click here on the format output an stl or you can export a 3mf file format that's also very popular in the 3d print world if you're used to this then of course you're well aware of how to print once you've got that saved onto your file put it on a usb stick and you can take it to a 3d printer and load it up or send it over wi-fi or bluetooth through the network 3d printers today receive files over the network as well so now that you've saved your 3d model you've got it saved on your hard disk you put it on your usb stick or you've uploaded it directly to your printer so if, if you already have a printer you know what to do if you don't know anything about 3d printing find a local 3d printer in your area in your city and just send them the SDL or the 3D model file that you've generated. Tell them what scale you want it to be. So in my case, I asked my brother to print me this toy in this particular size. I gave him 10 centimeters long. He was able to just inside the 3D printer, scale it to the right scale that I wanted. So that's the beauty of 3D printers today. The software that's built into the 
printers, you can actually rotate the toy or the object, scale the object up or down. Anyone who understands how to use 3D or has the experience will be able to make sure that you're getting the object according to the design that you wanted. And it's very quick. It was a three-hour job for the Chewy toy and for the key holder, the, the smaller key holder, took about half an hour to print. Within three and a half hours, I had two objects. And then I also did the Chewy sitting object. So it's printed all in one color. If you want multicolored prints, you can go to a printer who has printers that can print in multicolors. So therefore, you don't have to paint on the object. I painted on mine. Not the best paint job. <laughs> I didn't find the right paint for plastic. Yeah, you can probably go to a reasonable, a good toy shop and get those paints for models that, you know, they use. You've got different types of plastics. You've got soft materials that you can print in. As you can see, this is a great way of printing your own custom designs. If you want to just see a model, a mock-up of, of a design in 3D, work with your sketches to AI imagery to create that 3D model, print it, and within a short space of time, have that ready in hand. So this was about two and a half, three hour print, and it's in my hand ready for me to say, okay, that doesn't look quite like a Lego. I need to maybe design it differently and I could export this or import this into a 3D modeling software like Blender or Maya and start remodeling it and breaking it apart and adding some texture to it so that I now have a finished product that I can actually go and print. So when you look at the opportunities, you could create toy figures, you could create little accessories for your kitchen, you can create fridge magnets. For example, I gave it an image that I generated of myself looking a lot richer than I really am and smarter. I generated this image and I said, generate an action figure toy of me from this reference. I'll use the image to generate a 3D model for printing. And it came up with something that eh, maybe it's not quite me, but has a reference of me, I guess. And then I said to it, give me a left view, a side view, and give me a back view as well. I also asked it, chat gpt to look online search and to create a mid-journey prompt of this style because I, I was quite happy with this kind of style and that's where i moved on to mid-journey to generate images of me <laughs> in funny little kind of characters and it, it kind of got it it's it's quite funny so you can imagine giving someone a friend of yours a uh, print like this you could generate designs of things like molds if you want to mold a product you know here i did a mold for a soap with a kind of a shape a relief of a tree in it where you create the actual mold that you create the first the soap out of it and then generate the silicon mold out of it so you can actually be quite creative with your designs or kitchen accessories if you want to create a, a very specific design hook to hang towels in your kitchen i think this is a technology that's got legs this is the beginning of the next way of working prompt to 3d modeling is gonna happen if you combine that with image to 3d it'll be very powerful and if you'll be able to then have accuracy of scale, tell the AI to extrude or scale up certain parts of the image and you can draw with it and give it references, I can see we're going in that direction where 3D modeling will be almost like uh, building, working with clay, except it'll be very virtual and the AI will be involved uh, heavily. If you're into toy design, if you're into product design, like actual product, if you're making designing for computer games, assets, want to create your own custom toys and gifts that you want to give people, then you now have at your disposal the tool without needing the knowledge of how to model in 3D and how to design for 3D. You've got that at your fingertips now, which is amazing. My background's in 3D animation. I am a professional with my and using 3D software. For me, this is just a complete paradigm shift in how we're going to work in the future. Highly recommend it to play with it if you have, if you can get your hands on a 3D printer. Uh, one thing I didn't mention, I think, is that because it's going to become more and more accessible, this kind of workflow, there's a sustainability element to it. You might think that you're printing in plastic. But this didn't require any packaging. It didn't require any transport, direct transport, I should say, because, of course, the material had to be transported. But there is an element of sustainability in working this way, where it's customized and we can decide we don't have to overproduce stuff. Anyway, so if you like this video, click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more AI tips and tricks. Uh, I was happy to be able to bring you one from while I'm on holiday. I just thought I'd shoot off... Uh, 
this uh, video quickly. And if you want to see how Midjourney works and see a tutorial about that, click on this video link here. And if you want to see how to use Recraft, which is another very good design tool, and I highly recommend that one, click on this tutorial link here.